What electricity there is here in the meeting this morning. What a thrill to be worshipping and hearing testimony and exciting music, seeing young people performing and worshipping the Lord. I tell you, there was electricity in the synagogue in Nazareth when Jesus returned from the Jordan. Word had spread that something had happened to him. The Holy Spirit had come upon him in a new way. And now he was coming home. And he was sure to go to the synagogue on the Sabbath. Perhaps he would tell them what had happened to him. And when he arrived, he called for the scroll of the book of Isaiah. And he turned to chapter 61. And he gave his testimony in the words that he read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book gave it back to the attendant and the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on him and then he began to say to them today in your hearing this scripture is fulfilled at this congress we're giving a great emphasis rightly so to the word cause it's a strong word we admire people who take up causes who live for ideals that they're prepared to give their lives to. And Jesus made Isaiah 61 his own cause. He said that he had been anointed by the Holy Spirit for a purpose, namely, to accomplish a cause. He hadn't been anointed by the Spirit for his own edification or for his own enjoyment not even for his own reassurance. He had been anointed in order to accomplish a cause. He had been anointed, he said, to preach good news to the poor. He had been sent to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. He had been anointed and sent to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And during the ministry that he had for three years, it was 24-7. He gave himself totally to the cause for which he had been anointed by the Spirit. Now roll the clock on three years. Jesus has died, risen again, and ascended into heaven. And the day of Pentecost is about to dawn. And that which was prophesied by the prophets is about to come true. Namely, that what had happened to one man, that the Holy Spirit had entered fully into one man, now the Holy Spirit was going to enter into the heart of every believer. And on the day of Pentecost it happens. The miracle happens. First 120 and then over 3,000 people are anointed with the Spirit of God. And why? Not for their own edification, not for their own enjoyment, not for their own reassurance. They are anointed by the Spirit in order to accomplish a cause. And the Christian church takes on the cause for which Jesus gave his life and died on the cross because we as a church are called to continue the work of Jesus Christ. Now I know it didn't happen literally in the way I'm going to describe it, but I can just picture those 3,000 and more Christians standing somewhere in Jerusalem on a wide, big, open plaza there in the town of Jerusalem and reciting together with a loud voice the Spirit of the Lord has come upon us because he has anointed us to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent us 
to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. He has sent us to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now roll the clock on 2,000 years. Call at that church in the inner city. Visit that local Salvation Army Corps. The same drama is being enacted. The miracle still happens. The Spirit of God comes upon those who put their faith in the Lord Jesus. And they are anointed by the Holy Spirit. And like Jesus himself, we are anointed for a purpose. We are anointed by the Holy Spirit in order to accomplish a cause. It's not, let me say it again, to make us feel better inside or to have a wonderful emotional experience. The words of Isaiah are the cause that are given to us because we, in this day and age, have to live out those words. We, like Jesus, are anointed to preach the good news to the poor. Now, I believe that the Salvation Army has a special mission to take those words literally. The Salvation Army was raised up by God, particularly, specially, to help those disadvantaged in society. And we praise God for all that we've seen and heard about that is happening here in Australia. But we are also called to proclaim the good news to those who are poor in spirit. And you don't have to go very far, even in the most gracious suburb, to find those who are poor in spirit. But we are anointed to bring to those who are poor and those who are poor in spirit the good news that God is for us. God is not against us. God's love is so overarching that it reaches to the heart of everyone. God is for us, not against us. And yet there are people, even those brought up in the Christian faith, who seem to suffer from some kind of inferiority complex, spiritual inferiority complex. They say, well, God may be for us, but I've let him down so badly. How can he be for me? He surely is against me. But the wonderful news that we are called to proclaim is that God accepts us what as we are, God loves us so much that just as we are, we are accepted by him. And we are called to proclaim that news, accept it for ourselves, and then to proclaim the good news. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. And that's you, my friend. And that's me because we have been anointed by the Spirit to bring the good news. We, like Jesus, have been anointed to heal the brokenhearted. I think that's one of the most beautiful sentences in the whole Bible. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. But the commission comes on us. This is our cause, to heal the brokenhearted. And every core is surrounded by thousands of people who deep down are brokenhearted. They have deep personal sorrows, loss of loved ones, breakdown of health, fading powers, loneliness. They have deep disappointments with life that can hardly be put into words. And we have been anointed by God the Holy Spirit to bring a message of hope to the brokenhearted. We cannot miraculously remove all the causes for all their brokenheartedness. But we can tell them of the one who stands with them in their sorrows and who will heal their broken hearts. I hope that when people come to our core on a Sunday morning, they hear the words of Jesus, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. 
And I pray that in our sharing of the good news that they hear the note of hope. I trust that we tell them that nothing can separate them from the love of Christ. Not trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword. And that we tell them that amidst the greatest adversity, they can be more than conquerors through him who loved them. We can't let them down. We have been anointed by the Spirit to heal the brokenhearted. And we, like Jesus, have been anointed in order to proclaim freedom to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. We have been anointed by the Spirit of God to proclaim the good news that God wants to change circumstances and to change lives. The Christian gospel is the most powerful force for change there is. Things need not stay as they are. The captives can be set free. The blind can be made to see. The oppressed can be released. And we believe that this is true in both the literal sense and in the spiritual sense. God wants those that are captives by bad circumstances in their lives to be set free. But God also wants us to be set free within from all that holds us back from being what God truly wants us to be. God wants the blind to see. He is concerned about our physical health. We know that from Jesus. But God also wants those who are blinded by prejudice and hatred to be made whole. God wants those that are oppressed by evil political systems and economic injustice to be released. But God also wants those who are oppressed by inner fears, their own inadequacies, their low self-esteem, to be released. And friends, we have been called to be the ones who will proclaim the good news that life doesn't need to stay as it is. In God's power, circumstances and lives can be transformed. And we, like Jesus, I've been anointed to proclaim that this, this is the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of the Lord's favor. Now that's a reference to the year of Jubilee in the Old Testament, which used to happen every 50 years. When the Jubilee silver trumpet sounded, all slaves were set free in that year, and all wrongs had to be righted every 50th year. But Jesus proclaims that with his arrival, every year is a year of jubilee. The kingdom of God is at hand, he said. Now is the acceptable year of the Lord. Now is the time of salvation. And we have been anointed in order to proclaim that now is the acceptable year when God's kingdom is here and his power is released. Now is the time when wrongs can be righted. Now is the time for change and miracles to occur. Now is the time when men should beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Now, now is the acceptable year when men and women should do justly and love mercy and walk humbly with their God. Yes, and not only regarding the present. In this acceptable year of the Lord, we have been called to look to the f future and proclaim that one day, one day all the glorious promises in the Bible will be literally fulfilled here on earth. And we have been anointed to proclaim that every valley shall be exalted and every mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Friends, we have been anointed to proclaim that there will come a day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And everywhere men and 
men and women will cry out, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord, and he shall reign forever and ever. Friends, what a great trust has been given to us, because the trust, the cause that was given to Jesus, is our cause. And it depends on us in this day and generation. Well, where does that leave us? Let's go back to the synagogue. Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, sat down, and then he said to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The Spirit has come upon me. I have been anointed for a call. And now let's look at ourselves and ask ourselves, is this scripture being fulfilled today in the Lord's hearing? Has the Spirit come upon us? Have we been anointed for a cause? Now, if you are a believer, if you are a Christian, the answer is yes to that question. The Spirit of God is poured out on every believer. This is by definition what makes us Christians. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ, said Paul. We have all been anointed by that Spirit, every one of us. But we know that the Spirit can be hindered. We know that the Spirit can be quenched. We know that the Spirit Sometimes it's not allowed full sway within us. And there are times when we need to be anointed afresh, when we need to pray that the Spirit of the Lord will come upon us anew, when we are prepared to remove any hindrances that there might be. And perhaps today, today, now, is God's moment for us each. Now is the accepted time. Now is the time to be filled anew with his spirit, to be anointed afresh. But today, is the scripture being fulfilled in that we are living for the cause for which we have been anointed? We know that we have been anointed not for our own spiritual building up, but in order to fulfill a cause. It was wonderful to see on the screen and to hear General Evangeline Booth's words in new garments, the world for God, the world for God, I give my heart, I'll do my part. There is the cause, the world for God, and the world begins right outside our front door and in the community next to our halls. And the response that God loves to hear is, I give my heart, my inner personality, and Lord, you can trust me. I will do my part for the cause that you have given. There is something that God has planned for each one of us to do, and the tragedy is when Christians who are able to accomplish God's mission and have gifts to give to his cause hold back. All of us have been moved again and again as we have heard the story of the boy who brought his five loaves and two fish to give to Jesus. We know the story so well. But have you ever imagined that it might have happened this way, that when Andrew found the little boy and brought him to Jesus, and Jesus said, Son, now if you will give me the five loaves and the two fishes, I will bless them, and I will multiply them, and they will feed this great multitude of 5,000. Can you imagine if the boy had said to Jesus, no, my mother gave me this supper for me, and if you don't mind, 
I'll keep it and I'll eat it myself. That kind of response didn't happen, but if it had happened, it would have hit the Jerusalem Times in the headlines. Small boy refuses to share with the Son of God. Of course it didn't happen. But I tell you that sadly it does happen spiritually. And there is sorrow in heaven when there are people who could give themselves for the cause and have something to give, whether it be five loaves or four loaves or three or just two or one. But they say, no thank you, Lord. My life is mine. Now today is the day for the scriptures to be fulfilled in the Lord's hearing. Today is the day when we shall gladly be saying to the Lord, I give my heart. Lord, I'll do my part. Here are my five loaves. Here are my two fishes. Whatever you want me to do in the local community, wherever you want me to go, Lord, you can trust me. Sometimes we're perhaps uncertain what it is precisely what God wants us to do, but he will show us. We have those words, I give my heart, I'll do my part, written on that covenant card that most of you received as you entered into the hall here this morning. On this day, I confirm my covenant with God. I give my heart. I'll do my part. And in a moment, while we hear music and join in with the singing, there will be an opportunity for us to come and to confirm that we are ready to live for that cause that Christ has given us. You will find that pens will be provided if you would like someone to pray with you, just indicate it. But this is a moment when we are invited to renew our covenant and say to God, you can count on me. But before we move into that moment of prayer, let's read together those words. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And I will ask that those words come onto the screen. And as we read them together, let's make this our dedication. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And we say, I give my heart, I'll do my part. And here this morning we renew our dedication.